Hello and welcome back to another episode of my Leicester City Save on Football Manager 2022. Today we'll be taking on Porto in the Euro Cup second round knockout first leg. Yeah, I think I got it right. And Burnley in the league after a very good run of form recently in the league. <laughs> you last saw us beat Man City 3-0. Sorry if you've not seen that. Spoilers, but go back and watch it. Hmm. We then <laughs> were 5-1 up against Southampton and... Jay Adams brought it back to 5-4 and I was cacking my kecks, but we still held on to win before getting back-to-back -back wins against Norwich and Crystal Palace, taking us into fourth going into this Euro Cup game and obviously going into the next game against Burnley in the league, which you will also see. But before we get into those, if you're excited to see what happens, please do leave a like on this video and subscribe with notifications on so you're not to miss out on more like this in future and experiments, tactics videos, things like that, that are definitely going to come, especially the experiments. I'm really excited for those once the full game is out. Thank you very much. Now, going into this Porto game, we have tweaked a few things. We're playing the less attacking 4-3-3 with Madison and Barnes out wide in support of Jamie Vardy. And Didi is in support in midfield as a box-to-box -box midfielder, mainly because we don't have many other options. Ramsey is out, Sumari is out. So Kamara comes in as a ball-winning midfielder. Tielemann's also in there too. Fullbacks Bertrand and Pereira probably been our best so far this season Bertrand's been on great, great form and Pereira too Bertrand's experience also useful alongside Soyuncu Chum Fafana and Danny Ward's having to go in goals because Kasper Schmeichel picked up a little bit of a knock don't want to risk him and risk him being out for much longer as you can see a lot of players unregistered all that good stuff uh, and injuries Sumari, Ramsey and Belotti Belotti been on good form recently three goals in the league but we should hopefully have enough about us. We've got Conte Sao on the bench, after all, against his parent club, because that's allowed in Europe. I'm very much hoping for a Lamana Lua Lua against Newcastle situation when he was on loan at Portsmouth. That would be brilliant. Now, this is a very, very decent Porto side, most notably probably Pepe. We all know how dirty he can be. Chance on Ben by the former Newcastle defender. And Jesus Corona, who has agreed to sign for Liverpool, I believe, on a pre-contract because we were going to try and get him and didn't so that's fun and things are underway in Portugal this is a huge game a pretty tough ask hence we've dropped a little bit deeper into the more defensive 4-3-3 if we can get a good result even a clean sheet going into the game at the King Power I fancy our chances though fantastic <laughs> Just under 10 minutes to go in this first half and Ryan Bertrand has picked up an injury. Harvey Barnes looks like he's struggling with one too. Just what we need. Uh, we're beginning to pay the price this season for the congestion schedule, whatever. Fixture congestion, that's what I was trying to say. Oh, it's not good, it's not good. Hopefully we can still get out of Portugal with a result. As we head towards halftime at 0-0, very, very boring, but... Good from my perspective, bad from yours. Boring! It seems as though we have been on top in the first half, however, and it continues into the second half as Porto have also made a substitution, two Pepe's on the pitch, but we have a set piece, a throw in, in fact. Luke Thomas finds James Madison, who gets it across, and oh my god, how's that not gone in? What a hit that was from <laughs> Ricardo Pereira. That would have been excellent. Goodness me, he is so good at going forward, isn't he? Best player on the park as things stand. Now, with 20 minutes to go and Harvey Barnes kind of a little knock, we don't want it to get any worse. Conscious Sao coming on against his parent club. Let's see what he can do, Francisco. He was brilliant for me in my Aberdeen save, as I mentioned a few years ago on Football Manager. Let's see if we can reignite that spark and that love in with him. It's not looking good with 10 minutes to go. Still nothing. I am tempted to... Hmm... Is this silly? Pats and Daka came on and scored the winner in our last game. He's going to do the same again, hopefully. We're going to go more direct and tell him, basically, we're going to let them out. We're going to let them out a little bit. And he'll get in behind, hopefully. Or do we go the other way and in same... No, that's more likely to concede a goal. We'll let them out and hopefully we can get Pats and Daka in behind. Tell him to pass into space, more direct, take off the play out of the defence. He should be on the last line of defence. He's got 17 pace, I believe. Yep, 16 acceleration. Let's see if that can do the business against, hopefully, tiring legs. Tiring legs of Pepe, perhaps. Oh, no. P 
Porto do come at us, however. Oliveira, it's two for Fana. Okay, Grujic, former Liverpool man, takes it down excellently. And that is a great save by the other former Liverpool man, Danny Ward. Not meaning too much action. He's had a very, very quiet game, which is just what you want when Casper Michael can't play. But he pulled out a great stop there. That's, that is cynical. It's not even that Pepe. It's not even the dirty Pepe on Conscious out there. That'll be fun when they get back into training together. We're into added time. It's been a very, very dull game. A very, very tight game. But it's nil now. We've got a clean sheet heading back to the King Power, which you will see in the next episode. Be sure to come back for, for that. Decent. Hopefully, we can now go and win against Burnley. I'm carrying on this good run of form in the league that sees us fourth in the league for now. <laughs> oh, God. Bertrand out for three to six months. That's not good. Harvey Barnes, one to three days. That's okay. We'll probably just rest him against Burnley. And Pereira, one to two days. We'll also rest him against Burnley. Oh, good God. They're starting to add up, and I don't like it at all. And we'll be without Jimmy Vardy for that second leg. Even better. I don't know if Belotti will be back, but God, I hope so. If not, Pats and Daka will probably have to step up. He's done it before in the Europa League, to be fair. That was, however, in real life and not on Football Manager. But it's the same thing, isn't it? Tomato, tomato, potato, potato, Pats and Daka, Europa League, Euro Cup. Meh, same thing. We are, however, in the hat for the Euro Cup quarterfinal and semi-final because for some reason they lay out the path now. So let's see who we will face if we get there. Ajax or Rangers, I'd like that draw. We don't get it, however. Napoli or Bayer, nope, still not us. Leipzig or Shakhtar, that might be favourable. Maybe, we don't get it. Atalanta or Real San Sebastian, Real Sociedad. Okay, we'll take that. Um, we don't have much choice to be fair but probably the most favourable draw out of that was maybe Ajax or Rangers or Braga or PSV we don't get that but we'll take it and if we progress through even that should we get there the semi-final will be Napoli or Bayer or Eintracht Frankfurt or Lazio against Atalanta Real San Sebastian Porto or us Leicester City brilliant not confusing or needless at all and going into the game against Burnley, we are currently trailing Man City by one point, albeit with the game in hand. Win this game, we go back into the Champions League places as simple as that. However, we are going to be rotating in this game with one eye on that game against Porto, also having to be wary of injuries. Schmeichel does come back though. In the back four of Justin, Fafana, Evans and Thomas. Fafana the only one keeping his place. Ideally, we'll be comfortable here and we will take on Vestergaard and rest Fafana. Kamara keeps his place in front of the back four with Tielemans and Didi in the middle of the park simply because we don't really have much other choice with Sumari and Ramsey also still out. Conchasau starts on the right hand side with Albrighton on the left and Vardy suspended in that next game so he keeps his place. Fine to risk him. We've got a bench put together. There's enough options there should things go Pete Tong. Hopefully they don't though. It is a Burnley side who sit 17th. But they do have Danny Alves at right back, which is interesting. I bet when he was at his prime, in the dizzy heights of Champions League football with Barcelona, winning La Liga's all over the shop, El Clasico's up against Ronaldo, he never thought he would be playing away at the King Power in a back four with Kevin Long, me and Corny himself, Danny Alves. Goodness me. What a poor fella. I've been to Burnley. I'll leave it at that. We are underway though and all Brighton has got a corner immediately and Fafana has headed over. That would have been some start. And Danny Alves, the man himself, has found Goodmanson. Wow, goodness me. I feel so sorry for him. Oh dear. They're playing it about at the back though. They are looking like prime Barcelona. I'll, I'll admit that. We're getting nowhere near them. Dwight McNeil is currently playing like Neymar. Uh, he gets the ball across and... Ashley Barnes is headed over. Can we have less of that, please? I know Danny Alves is there, but please, less of that. James Justin has a throw in on the right-hand side. I said less of that. Let's have more of our football. We can play good football. We know we can. Johnny Evans. Johnny Evans is apparently brilliant from uh, shooting from range on his weak foot. I was not expecting that whatsoever. Goodness me, it really is clash of the Titans here between Danny Alves and Johnny Evans. That was absolutely fantastic football from Leicester. I don't know what he was doing up there, in all honesty. I think the goalkeeper perhaps unsighted. 
But it's still a great hit on Evan's weak foot. I am quite stunned, I won't lie. <laughs> and that Johnny Evans goal takes us in at half time, leading 1 0. He's barely played for us at all. Sayunchu and Fafana have been my go to centre backs. And he's pulled that out. Have I been wrong all this time? Now, the second half is well underway and we do have a corner. Oh, Brighton goes to the near post and uh, I'm not sure what's going on there, but that was bloody close. I know that much. Conscious out on a yellow card. He loves getting booked. What a fella. Has given the ball away. That's just what you need. We've got... Oh, it's, it's, why are we getting a clear-cut chance one? I, I didn't mean to do this. I apologise. I really, really do. Luke Thomas is throwing on the left-hand side. A second lesser... Shoot! Okay, no. A second... Shoot! No, okay. Okay, he took that literally. A second Leicester City goal would be nice so we can take some players off and rest them. We might have to do that anyway and just hope for the best. Now, not blessed with midfield options on the bench. So we go to three centre-halves at the back, pushing the wing-backs a little further forward. Fafana <laughs> in as a cover defender because the other two can't run, essentially. Johnny Evans and Vestergaard has got seven pace. He comes on for Kamara, giving him a bit of a rest. He's not been playing much football and he's come straight in, playing quite a lot of games regularly. Don't want to tire him out and injure him too much. That's all we'll do for now. Use the other subs to rest players and break up the play a little bit too. Hopefully see this game out. Please don't throw it away against Burnley after I slag them off. Uh-oh. A Burnley free kick's gone in and that's offside. Please be offside. Is that James Collins? If they've got James Collins at the back with Danny Alves, please God be offside. Thank goodness for that. Nathan Collins. I don't even know who that is. Clear, well offside. They've got no idea what they're doing, it would seem. Danny Alves will be fuming, I tell you that much. Into added time, we're all cautious, we're telling them to waste time. Yeah, let's not mess about. Consound not having his best game. Uh, I will say Perez will get a cameo. Yeah, why not? Okay, and Lukeman too for all Brighton. Waste that time, slow down the play. That's lovely. Into added time, do not throw this away. A very, very boring episode. One goal in two games. But we go into that second leg against Porto with a clean sheet and... We continue our winning run in the league. And that's what's important, isn't it? Yes, thank you. And as you can see, that win has taken us into the Champions League spots. Up to fourth place, two points clear of Man City as we head towards the run-in. Just nine games to go in the league. But we'll be back in the next episode with the second leg against Porto immediately after this. And also that game against Aston Villa. Aston Villa on good form. If we do drop out of the Champions League spots, they'll be in competition for that fifth place spot. So it's a big game. We need to assert our dominance, not only in the league, but in the Midlands too, and beat them. If you have enjoyed this episode though, and you are excited for that next one, please do leave a like on the video. It goes a long, long way in helping me. Can we get 10 likes? That would be much appreciated. Subscribe if you are new around here and you have not already done so with notifications on so you don't miss out on future in future, not on future, that's not how it works. There's experiments, tactics, videos to come. I'm very, very excited for them. I hope you are too. Thanks for coming along. Take care and just have a nice.